Hey everybody, Sarah here. So this is going to be the beginning of a brand new series on this channel that was inspired by a question that I got from one of my longtime members. Thank you to everyone who is a member on this channel, by the way. Anybody who else would like to become a member, it's $2 a month and you get access to your own videos as well as access to live videos after they're over. So this series is going to go over the introduction to each of the corn snake morphs uh, in a way that the sort of common person can more understand. I do these deep dives that are more advanced and I understand that it can kind of turn some people off so I want to do something more basic for people who are a little bit more new to the hobby and today we are going to go over corn snake morphs let's start with a and b just to introduce uh, a melanistic and erythristic and buff those are the three we're going to talk about today I also have a website, sarahsnakeshop.com, where I have snakes available, of course, as well as some merch. But most importantly, I have corn snake morph books available on there. For anybody who is wanting an introduction to corn snake morphs, my books are written specifically for that in mind. And so you can check those out as well. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, all those fun things. Also, you can check out reptilinks.com if you would like an alternative food source for your snakes. Uh, if you are sick of having dead, frozen mice and rats, along with all the nasty things that happen with those in your freezer next to your TV dinners or whatever you might have. If you're sick of having those things, or you're kind of grossed out by them like I have been. Reptilinks might be a wonderful thing for you to try for your snakes. They just look like little sausages and uh, they're in a collagen casing. I love to use them for my snakes. So if if you would like to try them out, you can use my code SARAHSNAKE27 at checkout. So the first morph I want to go over is known as a melanistic. A lot of people call this albino and albino is a very interesting term. We don't really like to use that in the corn snake hobby because the term albino technically means lacking a pigment, any pigment. Um, so it could mean uh, lacking black pigment, which is what we normally consider it. So when there's a human who is an albino, they're lacking melanin it's because melanin is one of the only pigments that are actually in a human's skin. And so when we say albino, a lot of people mean without melanin. And in corn snakes, since corn snakes have three main pigments, we can't just say albino because they do have that melanin, but they also have two other pigments that are red and yellow. So we already talked about the word melanin. Uh, melanin, again, is that dark pigment in the skin. And when you have a melanin or a melanistic, that means you're taking away the melanin. You remove that melanin completely. And so you are left with a snake that is just reds and yellows and of course some oranges and some other mixed colors like that. But amelanistic is basically just removing that melanin, turning the snake from their typical black, white, red, yellow into just red, white, yellow. If you would like to see a more detailed and deep dive version of this for amelanistic, I will link a video up above for you. As babies, amelanistic usually hatch out being white and orange or red. They usually develop more and more yellow as time goes on. That's pretty typical of most corn snake morphs. Most corn snake morphs that end up having yellow will not be yellow at hatching. That's not all of them, but it is a lot of them. Now I'm going to move on to anerythristic. Anerythristic is another type of albino, if you're talking about albino in the sense of removing a pigment. So um, erythrian is the name of the red pigment in the skin of a snake. So anerythristic, again, means taking away the erythrian. So what we are left with is a snake that just has the melanin left and the xanthophore, which I'm not gonna get into xanthophore, but that is what we call the yellow pigment. So you're just left with a snake that has some yellow pigment and some black pigment left over. There are multiple different kinds of anerythristic. This is anerythristic type A. The reason it's called type A is just because it was the first type that was found, and there are other types that have been found since then, uh, one of them being charcoal. So uh, if you're wondering about another anerythristic type, charcoal is another one. They are just not genetically compatible. They look the same, they look very similar, but they're not exactly the same genetically. As babies, anerythristic are usually just black and white, whereas a charcoal is going to be more of a dark gray on dark gray. Charcoals usually don't get near as much yellow on them as anerythristic type A, uh, whereas anerythristic type A can have yellow that sometimes even goes all the way down the sides of the body. 
Really quick, this is Sarah in editing. I'm sorry for the weird cut here, but I wanted to mention a couple of other things. One thing being that there is a mutation that is anorthristic that is called Black Diamond. Uh, it is a new mutation. In fact, the newest mutation that we have. I have a video on it if you'd like to go watch it. It is nearly completely black, uh, even more dark black than what we have in our charcoals. I didn't necessarily put it in this section originally because for one, it hasn't necessarily been proven as a mutation in corn snakes yet but it is black like these so I wanted to sort of put it in here it is not being advertised as being anorethristic, uh, but it, it does have a very similar look, so I wanted to mention it. We would call it hypermelanistic, uh, hyper being an excess of melanin, that dark pigment, but it also doesn't seem to have any reds or yellows in it, so uh, it's kind of, there's a, it doesn't really have a specific place to put it in. I did think it was important to mention it here. One other thing I want to mention is most of our anorethristic morphs that we call anorethristic, such as charcoal they are also azanthic. So I mentioned xanthin earlier in the video being the yellow pigment. The majority of the yellow pigment is also removed. And so eventually we will talk about some anorethristic types that still retain a lot of that yellow. I'm not going to talk about that in this video, but that is something to look forward to. So now we've gone over two different types of albino. We've gone over the amelanism and the anorethrism, but now we're going to go over something that is more of a hypo erythristic mutation. Now hypo means taking away some but not all. You've probably heard this in medical terms before um, hyper versus hypoglycemia or hypothyroidism things like this are very common terms and if you think about it in those terms hyper means an excess of or more of where hypo means less than usual. We already talked about what erythrin is which is the red pigment so I'm going to move on to the actual morph that we're talking about which is called buff. It have all of the same pigments that any other snake has, but some of their red pigment is just sort of uh, removed and diluted a little bit. So they look a lot more of a golden orangey color, but they do still have some of that actual red pigment in them. There are, of course, other corn snake mutations that remove red pigments that are not the typical anorethristic that we just talked about, but we will get into those in a future video. Since we're talking about buff, which is the B, like I said, we're doing A's and B's, I also want to mention other morphs that are similar to buff, but not quite the same, one of them being toffee. Toffee is another hypoerythristic mutation that looks very similar to buff, and in fact, we're not even 100% sure that they are actually different. We haven't been able to do the breeding trials in order to find out for sure, because the breeding trials would be so difficult and take so many years, and for a lot of people, it's just not a priority. Priority. Another mutation that is similar is called yellow jacket. And again, we're not sure if any of these are the same or different from each other. People who breed them say that they look very different, but from my perspective and from the perspective of a lot of different people, they all look pretty much the same. And the reason that it's not a very high priority to check to make sure if they're the same or different is because they do look just very similar to a normal. And so it's just not a high priority for most breeders to be working on something that ultimately just kind of looks like a normal. As babies, buffs kind of just look like really light colored normals or oddly colored normals, but then as they get older, they kind of look a bit more brown, tan, golden-ish color. And it's going to be the same way with toffee and yellow jacket as well. I do have videos on all of these mutations that go further in depth, uh, including types of normal. So if you guys would like to watch that, I will link playlists and other videos up above and or in the description if you would like to check those out. So just a recap, today we went over the amelanistic mutation, which a lot of people also call albino. We, like I said, we don't like to use that term, but uh, it is sort of the most common layman's term for it. We talked about anorethristic and charcoal, which is another type of anorethristic. And we talked about buff, which is a hypoerythristic mutation, as well as toffee and yellow jacket, which are both also considered hypoerythristic mutations. I really hope that this video helps you. Feel free to ask any follow-up questions in the comments below. This is the first video in this series, and so I'm still trying to learn what you guys uh, need from me to make these videos the best they can be for you to learn these introductions. So if there's anything specific that you have questions on, I would really, really love to hear it in the comments. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in a new video soon.